what I want you to do is save the record. Who you are, what you did, how you served, what you think about it. When you don that uniform, you, you accept some responsibility that as a civilian you don't have. The bond that you build with with your brothers in arms when you're you know deployed in harm's way every day is, is something that you can't find anywhere else. A battle buddy is basically just the, the soldier next to you. Um, I guess in simple terms it would be your best friend in the army. They are a citizen. They are a person with their own lives and struggles and trials, but on top of that, they are out there doing their part for our country and fighting for what we hold dear to us every day. And so I look back with great pride on the service of myself and, and those that I've served with, uh, best friendships in the world. You give me a job, I'm gonna get it done. Whether it's my time, my family time, whatever it is, it's gonna get done. Um, this is just another way to broaden the scope of what history means, whether it's written or, or audio or visual. I really appreciate you guys uh, doing this, though, talking to us, to us guys. I think it's important. People need to realize that regardless of what you hear, there is always more to the story. One of the things we're doing at the museum is trying to record uh, the current conflicts uh, in Iraq and Afghanistan for posterity. Uh, the trip to Cantini was a very long drive to get there, but once we got there it was very enjoyable. And I think it was important because it really um, brought everything to life for us. Before we had just been reading stories and books, and some of the books that we read were more um, technical on the military aspects and so it was hard to visualize what we were reading and getting into the museum and seeing the um, bunkers that people would stay in and you know seeing um, a replica of uh, Omaha Beach just being there and, and hearing the sounds and seeing those things was very helpful in visualizing what those soldiers went through. We got a good overview of the both the research center collections and also of the uh, artifact collection. So um, I think the uh, students in this project got to see both the history of the First Division, background information uh, for Leonard Wood, and also to see behind the scenes of our museum operations. What we learned about the Big Red One was their history, proud history. Uh, they were first in many aspects, uh, First Division overseas in World War I, things like that. And you kind of see how the Big Red One was really one of the proud divisions of the Army. It's pride, having pride in, you know, what you stand for, um, having discipline, you know, and just doing the right thing, representing. Well, the interesting thing for me is that when I was walking around the galleries, I saw several active duty soldiers walking around, and they were sitting in on the Vietnam War exhibit with us as we were watching a video. And even though they were not Vietnam War veterans, they were very moved by that exhibit. And so I think it put into perspective that, you know, these soldiers are in this together, and this is a very moving experience for all of them, whether they have been in these combat situations or not. And that really helped me to understand that. And we tell America's story through the story of the Big Red One, but we're far more than commemorative of the Big Red One. We are telling the nation's story. We're telling the story of every soldier, every veteran, every service person through the lens of one particular example of selfless service to country. What a lot of people think when they hear about the uh, basic training is that it's scary and it, it, it's terrible. It's if you don't work together as a team with your group, with your unit, with your fellow soldiers. You work single-handedly, it's gonna be a nightmare because you don't have any battle buddies to fall back on. And there's also those people that aren't there. Our goal is to document the lives and military service of Americans, America's citizen soldiers, to foster greater understanding by the public they serve and to preserve their experiences, memories, and perspectives for posterity. 
it, it's hard because it tapping into someone's personal life usually you you establish very good rapport with them and you uh, know them very well uh, and, and this is a different situation where there's a little bit of a time crunch and it, it was definitely a challenge to establish that rapport before we actually get into it <laughs> it was a real culture shock uh, I went there I shaved my head before I went you know tried to get ahead of the power curve and they just got me in more trouble <laughs> and they still cut my hair and charged me two bucks for it I was scared to death I'm not gonna lie I was scared to death I was a 17 year old kid and all these I don't know where they get these guys from but they always get the biggest guys that come and you know take care of you while you're there so it was a uh, very intimidating I mean, the day that I graduated you know just looking back and seeing those guys and you know seeing the, the sacrifices they made just to be there to train me you know away from their family they're always there you know um, and the professional manner in which they trained us it was you know really impressive basic it, it was stressful, but it is what you make it, you know, because you meet a lot of people in basic training, and uh, it, it's really fun meeting people from different places. You young men and women who are serving us so superbly today are the history that we're going to want to tell to a future generation of American citizens. Soldiers go through so many, you know, briefings and seminars, you know, this is how it's going to be, you're going to be stressed, but there really isn't any way to, you can't describe stress to someone, it, it has to be something that's felt, and uh, unfortunately there really isn't any way around that, and they're, they're eventually going to have to go to those stressful situations and, and deal with it the best way they can, and hopefully, you know, their friends will be there to help them out. Even in that environment, it was just really uncomfortable, they're in their dress blues, we're dressed formally to meet them, and it just, it was a little artificial, and so breaking through that artificial, you know, formal barrier just to get down to the nitty gritty and talk to each other as people was was really nerve wracking, but once we did it was great. It seems like when people do oral history projects, they only interview people that have been in combat. And I felt that that gives us kind of a skewed view of all of those people that serve in the military. If we don't get the people in the rear echelon, the, the military wouldn't function. Right. I'd say a lot of people respect MPs after they, they see more of what they do in a combat theater because I guess they function more or less as cavalry scouts, dare I say. So they're a pretty versatile tool you can use for a lot of things. Even training uh, security forces. So they can be used as a force multiplier somewhat. What is happening here over this 24 hours or so that you're here is young American citizens with no military experience are getting to know their soldiers. And your soldiers work for you. And you young soldiers are getting to know the citizens who take care of you whose hard work in taxes, pay your pay, buy your uniforms, give you your benefits, and care for you while you and your family are in the country's service. That bond between soldier and citizen is absolutely vital to our democracy. That relationship is unique in world history. The interview process, it was nerve wracking at first. You, you're prepared and then you get in that room and you sit across from that soldier and you're trying to bring about their story, you're trying to speak clearly and confidently, you don't want to repeat yourself, you want to adhere to all these rules, and then you're trying to bring that story out. It, it kind of seemed like a movie a little bit, because, you know, you see the firefights and whatnot, stuff happening, and it's just, you just see like smoke in the back, and people are moving in slow motion a little bit, and you're just like, what is going on? You, you get used to it. It's it's, it's a fear that's there, but it's a, it, there's a fear that's not there about it. It's like if if, if I get hit by a motor, I was like, goodness, it, it just wasn't meant to be. <laughs> Sometimes they they wouldn't answer the question right away, or you had to build up to it. Sometimes they, they got off topic, but you know that's always welcomed because it allows them to stretch their minds and let them say what they want to say. Sometimes the question isn't always meant to be answered, but it's rather just a starting point for them to go off in their own retelling of their own stories of whatever they want to tell us. Did um, any of the younger soldiers look up to you? A lot, I would say a lot of them do, because um, I always try to advise them on their relationships 
you're too young, don't get married, you know, or this is how the females think, you know, you think you got it covered, but you don't know nothing, you know, so I try to let them get a little insight on that. And I think, you know, so, there are some that, hey, hey doc, you know, how about this? What do you think about that? You know, they would ask me questions and get my opinion on it. Uh, as you began to talk to the soldiers and they became more comfortable with us, they were very willing to open up and um, really give their perspective on the things they had been through in war and they were, um, at least my soldiers were, were very talkative, very open, um, they were funny and, and really connected with us. My oldest, he was actually about my, my youngest son's age now when uh, I got back for my second appointment. Daddy's got to go to work. I mean, somebody got to make that money, right? We, I joke about it a lot with them. I don't think I really speak to him about it. Uh, it's just work to me. Um, well, to him, it's daddy's going to work. To me, I love what I do. Uh, we just finished the uh, third interview that I've supervised in that studio, and uh, all three of the soldiers have reached a point in uh, their recall of events that has uh, moved them to tears. Um, it's very difficult for these active duty soldiers, some of whom, like the last gentleman, has done multiple deployments and who come here to uh, speak to us about the entirety of their lives and their military service to realize in their attempting to give frank answers that there are certain things that they've experienced that they have had to put away and not contend with. Uh, <clears throat> I remember before I left the second time, my youngest daughter uh, asked me she asked me if I was leaving again, and I told her yes. And uh, uh, she was little, and uh, she just <laughs> she always uh, said that whenever she saw us on TV, that we were shooting fire at each other. <laughs> and uh, so she asked me <laughs> if I was going to go shoot fire at people again, and I, I told her yes. And uh, she just told me to be careful and come back home. She was uh, really young. I couldn't believe she thought that much. You know? I find that for them it was a bit cathartic. I don't know if anyone has ever sat down and asked about their experiences before because sometimes war is just taboo and it's not something that you necessarily ask about. You don't want to offend them, you don't want to bring up bad memories, but sometimes they, they just need to talk. And I think some of them are really shocked by how interested the students were and how we really wanted to get them, get to know them, not only as soldiers, but as people. You know, it's called, we're, we're all a band of brothers. So, you know, regardless to if you're in the, from the Korean War, from, you know, Vietnam, you know, we all have seen things, you know, some have seen more than others, but we all know that experience. We all know that feeling. So to sit down and just talk it out, there, there's, it's a lot of therapy in that. At first, they, they expressed to me that they didn't really know what they were getting into. But then afterwards, they expressed their gratitude and said that this was a very cool and very awesome experience because they, they've never been asked these questions before. And if we don't ask these questions now, then who's going to ask them later? Um, as an NCO, there's, there's uh, the be, know, and do. Um, you know, be what you say you are, know what you need to do, and then do it. I think it gave me a better understanding of a soldier's experience. Um, I'm married to a soldier, and uh, there were things that I learned about my husband and his deployment that I had never known before, even though he's pretty open. Um, just getting to sit down and talk and, and knowing the right questions to ask him gave me a, a much better understanding of him and of, of the soldier's experience. It's all the people that I met and knowing that a lot of them gave their life. Um, 
I would not be who I am today had it not been for the military, my experiences in the military, the friends, the, the mentors, even sometimes those that oppose you along the way make you kind of who you are today.